justify. Uh, the fan in me wants to see a Triple Crown winner, the fifth of my lifetime. I've been lucky enough to be in attendance for the first four. I'm going to go out there. I'll be next to you to watch possibly the fifth. But the better in me, Matt, the handicapper in me, wants to bet against Justify. What do you think? We've been saying it. Uh, we've been saying it all along. I think, Brian, and and I have to. I have to agree with you. I think there are still enough question marks about Justify so that it warrants that I take a shot wagering against them. But I'm with you, Brian. Uh, there's nothing more historic and exciting than seeing a triple crown. And if Justify wins, I will be happy to tear up my tickets. But I, I think is a better. Um, and Brian, hey, you know me. I'm not afraid of betting chalk every now and then. Uh, a lot more than you. But in this case, I got to take a shot against them. That's right, Matt. Uh, we, we're in agreement again. I, I do think this Belmont is a good betting opportunity. I am projecting Justify to be, be around three to five in a 10-horse field. And uh, like you, I think there are enough questions. The biggest probably being the distance. It looks like, Matt, that Justify has bounced back from a tough Preakness really, really well. So from a physical standpoint, I think we're going to see the good Justify. But 12 furlongs at Belmont, I think that's the question mark for me. He's not worth it to me at three to five. Again, I will be rooting for Justify to win, but I'll also be rooting for some tickets, maybe some big tickets to come in because I think we have some good betting opportunities here, Matt. Like I said, Hofberg, Bill Mott's lightly raced uh, son of Tappet, I think is going to be the second choice. I think he's got the most buzz. Uh, he had some traffic problems in Kentucky when he, uh, when he rallied for seventh, and he was really running if you watch that Kentucky Derby down late. So I think Hofberg's been working really well up at Saratoga since the Derby. Like some recent winners, uh, Birdstone and uh, Tonalist, he comes in a fresh horse, second choice, and a solid second choice, Matt, and a horse I think that certainly can win. I agree with that, Brian. He's He arrived at uh, Belmont Park on Sunday. He's been out to, out to the track already uh, uh, today and, and looking good. And without question, Brian, he is, uh, he is the buzz horse. And, and even though I've seen a lot of project projections, I agree. I think Hofberg is going to be second choice. I've also heard, Brian, that out in Vegas where they're, where they're taking bets already, where they're always taking bets, um, that Blended Citizen is getting a lot of action early also. I think, uh, I think he's a horse that's going to get a lot of play uh, in the pools. Yeah, and, and I think you like him more than I do. Of course, he, uh, he looked really good on dirt after running uh, a lot on uh, other surfaces, uh, but he did that at Belmont uh, in, in finishing with a flourish to win the Peter Pan. I don't see blended citizens. Now, now, folks, if, if you are trying to be justified like Matt and I are, again, from a betting standpoint, not a rooting standpoint, but if you're trying to be justified, you pretty much have good odds on everyone else. Blended Citizen, Matt, I think will be over 10 to 1. He's in a grouping that uh, I think will be vying for third or fourth choice. The third choice, I think, will be Bravazo, D. Wayne Lucas's runner, uh, who, who ran uh, inconsistently at Louisiana, although he did win a nice stakes down there before a disappointing Louisiana Derby. Ran a decent enough Derby and then was closing fast in the Preakness. I think both of us expect that to be his best performance in the Triple Crown, though, not loving his chances in the Belmont and the Mountain Half. Although apparently uh, he has come out of the Kentucky Derby Preakness uh, double uh, in really fine fettle also and supposedly is very full of himself and training uh, really, really well, which as a side note goes to show that um, between him and Justify, Horses can run a little bit more often than we're used to. Hey, who knew? Who knew after watching 40 or 50 years of racing like us, Matt, that horses could run more than once every two months? Funny, funny stuff. Hey, uh, it, it's also a little trainer battle there. While every, all eyes are on Bob Baffert, uh, Baffert tied Lucas for the all-time uh, record with 14 wins in the Triple Crown Series. So uh, if somehow Bravazo does run even better in the Preakness, gets the Belmont win. Lucas would take back the lead. 
Uh, I'm not going to turn anybody off of Bravazo Blended Citizen. It wouldn't shock me if they ran big races on Saturday, but they're not two of my favorites. Tenfold now. Tenfold is another horse I think will be uh, bet a little bit mad. And Tenfold is an interesting horse because he is certainly progressing sloppy track uh, at Pimlico. Uh, I wasn't sure how he'd handle it. He handled it very well. He did. And again, this is another horse that is progressing ni- nicely. Uh, Hall of Fame trainer Steve Asmussen is very, very high on uh, Tenfold. Yeah, Tenfold uh, ran a big preakness. Of course, he was third. He was running late. Bravazo was running just a little bit better. But uh, with another race under his belt, the lightly raced Tenfold uh, could be a horse uh, certainly to watch out for. We haven't talked about uh, the horse I think we're both most interested in betting. And that's from the Todd Pletcher barn, Vinny Viola, Mike Rapoli owned Vino Rosso. Uh, Vino Rosso was an impressive winner of the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct. He's back home at Belmont. He's been taking uh, his time off now between the Derby and the Belmont. Another horse, uh, like so many, who skips the Preakness. Vino Rosso didn't have things his way on a sloppy track, a wide trip, and a, and a mud-filled-in-the-face trip for Vino Rosso. Finished ninth in the Derby. But this is a horse all along we thought would like the distance of the Belmont Stakes. Right, he's got the pedigree for the distance. Uh, he wanted a mile and an eighth uh, in the Wood Memorial. He's got Todd Pletcher as as the trainer. This is his specialty: skipping the Preakness and coming to uh, the Belmont Stakes. Todd is going for his fourth Belmont Stakes victory. And, and interestingly, um, even though in New York Pletcher is often a big, big favorite with his horses, um, in all of those. Belmont Stakes victories. His horses were not the favorite, and and in three out of the four, they were uh, very, very, very nice prices. And Vino Rosso, I think, is going to be a nice price, Brian. Absolutely, man. I can't see him being single digits in here with uh, Justifies odds as low as they'll be, and then and then Hofberg and Bravazo and Tenfold and Blended Citizen taking money. We might be talking about. Uh, even close to Derby type odds in Vino Rosso approaching 15 to one. If you look at his good races, I'm, I'm thinking the Sam F Davis, especially and uh, early wins in his career. And then uh, the Wood Memorial as well. You can see that this is a type of horse who really uh, gets going late and, and just wants to keep going. I think that'll be a good thing a mile and a half at Belmont. So Vino Rosso is certainly a horse Matt and I are go- both going to be looking to. Pletcher has another one in here, Matt, uh, the Louisiana Derby winner, Noble Indy. Uh, Noble Indy never really fired in the Derby. He had a wide trip, but he was uh, in striking position and then just backed out in the Kentucky Derby. He gets another shot in here, and uh, uh, perhaps both him and uh, Baffert's other horse, Restoring Hope, could be two uh, that do a little running early. Noble Indy, uh, who knows? Maybe he's setting the table a little bit for the other Pletcher, Vino Rosso. Yeah, could be. And again, uh, I, I think the story is is similar both with uh, with Noble Indy and Restoring Hope. Um, these are horses that you know have different ownerships, different combinations of ownerships, and their jockeys are going to go out and run their race. I don't doesn't have anything to do with being a rabbit or trying to wear down justify, but that's their style of racing. Both of those horses are a little bit more forwardly placed. And, and if they're going to have a shot, I think they, they need to run that way. Right. And, and free drop Billy, uh, for Dale Romans, Dale Romans keeps trying, bless his heart. Free drop Billy, uh, unfortunately just doesn't look quite up to this level to me at least. And then you have Gronkowski, and Matt, if you remember, I think a lot of people were completely dismissing Gronkowski, and I think part of that was being overbet in the Kentucky Derby. I don't think those odds will be as uh, as, as fluctuating in a bad way as they would have been for the Derby. I said before the Derby, before we knew he was going to be scratched, you know, don't throw out Gronkowski completely, and I kind of feel the same way now. Um, maybe he gets a little overbet because of his name connection to the New England uh, tight end. But uh, Gronkowski, you know, they're trained for a distance a little bit more over there. Uh, he's uh, switched barns from Jer- Jeremy Nosita to Chad Brown, uh, which can't hurt. And he's been working very well, often in company with Engage uh, for Chad Brown over here. 
just have a feeling Gronkowski is a horse who could get into the exotics. I don't know if you feel the same way. Yeah, I do, Brian. Uh, um, all of those things that you said are absolutely true. Going to Chad Brown is going to help. Uh, um, I think the the mile and a half distance is, is going to help. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he will not be over bet like would have happened in the Derby. Um, I'm going to include him in my uh, uh, Belmont Stakes exotics. Nice. Now, Matt, uh, of course, all eyes on Justify. We've been talking about the other horses, his his nine horses trying to stop him from becoming a triple crown champion. How does Justify win the race? How does Justify lose the race? I think Justify wins the race if uh, if he can get out on the lead and uh, settle into a nice, easy stride, carve out uh, reasonable fractions all the way around. And when he gets into the last quarter mile, eighth of a mile, he can go the distance. And if that's the case, I think he's going to be hard to beat. And, and then on the other side of the question that you asked, Brian, um, how much is he going to get pushed? Is there going to be a uh, noble India restoring hope right on his flank? Is he going to hear those footsteps, which will keep him uh, up in the bridle a little bit more, using up a little more energy? And when he turns for him, like I said before, it turns out that his tank is a little bit empty. And if that's the case, going a mile and a half, some of these other horses will will have more left and could go by him. Right, Matt. I think you. I think you nailed it on the head. Up in the bridle, using too much energy early. I, th I think that's really the key to the race, folks. Justify is the best horse in this race. This is not the strongest field uh, he's faced. That came in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I, I always wonder if Justify is more truly of a nine furlong horse than a twelve furlong horse. That's part of it. Uh, but I, I really do think what happens in the first mile of the race, like so many other horses who have, fall, have fallen a little short, uh, real quiet, Smarty Jones, spectacular bid. They they were used a little bit too much, maybe ridden overconfidently. Uh, I don't know if Mike Smith does that, but uh, I could see him win this race while not on the lead early. Uh, and, and I think Baffert has that in mind a little bit with possibly restoring hope or Noble Indy. But it, it really comes down to how well this horse relaxes. You kind of painted the picture of an American Pharaoh trip. The only Triple Crown winner really did have it his way early in the Belmont Stakes. And then he had plenty enough to show that he was the best horse. It didn't matter how long they were going to run. I think that's how Justify wins this race. If he's relaxed for the first mile, he, he will be awfully tough to beat. But if there's just a little bit of, uh, a, a little bit of pressure, whether he feels he has to go after restoring hope or noble Indy too early or they push if he's on the lead and they push him a little bit more than he wants to i think he will be softened up a little bit and it will allow horses uh to come running down the last uh, quarter mile and, and that mile and a half is going to be a long race and the preakness uh, i don't know if we saw a chink in the armor where he was getting run down a little bit in the preakness but uh it showed me that he's not so far above these horses that he's that he's uh, not beatable. I think he is beatable. Uh, really comes down to how fast or how hard he has to work early for me. Matt, let's talk our wagers, just our Belmont wagers here. Uh, I know you were looking at a trifecta. You're going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to keep it pretty simple in the Belmont with some exactness. So you go first. Tell us what you're betting in the Belmont. Yeah, I'm going to keep it simple, and, and uh, you know, I, I I'm looking for the uh, triple crown trifecta here. I had the trifecta in the Derby, although that wasn't very profitable, and in the Preakness, where where it was a much better outcome. And I'm going to take a shot here in the Belmont. As I said at the beginning of the show, folks, I'm not putting Justify on top. So real simple, I'm going to do two uh, trifecta part wheels. I'm going to use four horses on top: Vino Rosso. Hofberg, Tenfold, and Blended Citizen. I'm going to put Justify in second with all, and then I'm going to put those four on top again with all and Justify in third. Because quite frankly, I, I don't see Justify uh, running a totally a total clunker race where he finishes up the track. I really think um, 
if he doesn't win, he's still going to get second or third. So those are each of those tickets is 32 combinations. And at 50 cents, that's only a $16 ticket for each of them. So um, if Justify wins, um, I'm not going to lose that much. And I can enjoy the Triple Crown history. There you go, Matt. That's important to enjoy the Triple Crown if you do have to tear up your tickets. Uh, folks are thinking, uh, I, I, I want to be more different than Matt, but our thinking is a lot alike. The big difference for me being that I really do only like two horses in here if justifies beaten, and that's Hofberg and Vino Rosso. Vino Rosso probably will be double the odds of Hofberg, so I'd like to see Vino Rosso come through even more. But I'm with Matt, everything he said about the race. So I'm just doing two $20 exactas. Uh, Hofberg, $20 on top of Vino Rosso and Justify, and then Vino Rosso, $20 on top of Hofberg and Justify. So Justify runs second, and one of them passes like we've seen in a lot of triple crown attempts over the years. I'll have that exacta, but even better financially for me would be my top two horses running one, two, and that $20 exacta would be a windfall. Uh, that ticket costs $80. Folks, the Belmont Stakes, good betting opportunity, good triple crown opportunity. What could be better? Matt and I will be there at Belmont Stakes Day on Saturday. Matt, I'm looking forward to it. 